and lasting expression of all human relationships. To sum it up, it's a big deal. As you take this step into such a big deal moment, I want to share with you four truths and four instructions from God's word that I believe will serve you well. And the first is this, it's to love one another. The Apostle Paul tells us in Ephesians 4 to be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as Christ has forgiven you. The verse tells us that being kind is not enough, but to be compassionate. And compassionate literally means feeling or showing sympathy and concern for others. Show each other compassion. It'll serve you well. Paul goes on and it makes it a point that we must forgive each other just as Christ forgives us. A marriage without grace and forgiveness is a marriage that is not built on the love of Jesus. So I say we to love each other well. The second is this, to encourage each other. A daily affirmation of your love for each other in a place of honor you each hold in each other's lives will never return empty. First Thessalonians 5 says, therefore, encourage each other and build each other up. This is, in fact, you are doing. You're to be each other's number one cheerleader and team. You can never encourage each other too much. So cheer loud and cheer often. And I think if there's one that's marked Dylan, I think it's this one. The way you talk and honor, the way you talk about and the way you honor Brandon has been beautiful. Keep doing that. The third is this, to be unselfish. Even when Dylan's dirty gym clothes are on the floor. Maybe when the dishes are not done, to be unselfish and to be devoted in love. Honor one each other, one another above yourselves. To be unselfish in marriage is to honor your spouse. To place their needs above your own is to love them the way God has called us to love. Today you're declaring that your spouse's wants and needs, their desires are more important than your own. This is honoring your spouse in unselfish love. And finally, to be intentional. God never quit intentionally pursuing you both. He chased after you. Jesus came down from heaven, walked this earth, and suffered death, hell, and the grave because he loved you so much. He never quit. His love for you is not accidental. It's incredibly intentional. And it requires the same of us today. In the same way, as devoted followers of Christ, we must never forget intentionally pursuing God and pursuing each other. For you to love each other unselfishly for the rest of your lives and resolve to never quit. To be intentional to grow in your love for each other. It's not a resolve that will come from your strength, but instead from the strength of the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to tell you right now, ask the Holy Spirit. He wants to help. He's there for you. You ask him, and he'll show up. 2 Corinthians 5, 9 says this. It says, so we make it our goal to please him, whether we're at home in the body or away from it. When you walk in the intentional resolve to never quit and make your marriage pleasing to God, you will bring the Heavenly Father great joy. Love one another. Encourage one another. Be unselfish. And be intentional. Marriage is a covenant before God, but it's also sealed by vows in front of your friends and family here today. So Dylan, I'd love for you to repeat after me. I know you guys exchanged vows a little bit earlier, but these are just commitments that we're making in front of God and in front of other people to stick. To declare your love and your commitment to them. So repeat after me. I, Dylan. I, Dylan. Take you, Brennan, to be my wife. Take you, Brennan, to be my wife. And these things I promise you. And these things I promise you. I'll be faithful to you. I'll be faithful to you. I will respect. I will respect. Trust. Trust. Help. Help. And care for you. And care for you. I will share my life with you. I will share my life with you. 
I will forgive you as we have been forgiven. I will forgive you. And I will try my best to serve you each and every day. I will try my best to serve you each and every day. Through the best and worst of what is to come. Through the best and worst of what is to come. As long as we shall live. As long as we shall live. And Brennan, for you, you say, I, Brennan. I, Brennan. Take you, Dylan. Take you, Dylan. To be my husband. And these things I promise you. I'll be faithful to you. I'll respect you. Trust. Help. And care for you. I'll share my life with you. I will forgive you as we have been forgiven. And I will try my best to serve you each and every day. Through the best and worst of what is to come. As long as we will live. Dylan and Brennan have made the choice today to symbolize their love through tying three cords together, and we're going to take a few moments to do that. Ecclesiastes as a quarter of three strands not easily be broken. And I want to tell each and every person here today that it's not just their cords that are tied together, but it's ours. That we love and support you guys. So we cheer you on in every season of life. And as you look around today, you got people standing in the rain because they love you so much. And what God has brought together, let no man separate. And they won't. The wedding ring is an outward sign of the vow <coughs> you guys have made today. It says to the world, you've made sacred vows. I'm not that kind of, I don't know what's going on. Sometimes. Sometimes. Thank you. We're committed to love one another. The ring you have is a circle for a reason. It's an eternal love. It has no end. It has no start. It has no beginning. And it has no end. And that's the love that we have for each other. You can pass the rings in the best, best way. So you can place the ring on Brennan's finger and repeat after me. So I give you this ring. I give you this ring. It's a token of our marriage. A token of our marriage. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. The Son. The Son. And the Holy Spirit. Brennan, you can place the ring on Dylan's finger and repeat after me. I give you this ring. It's a token of our marriage. In the name of the Father. The Son. And the Holy Spirit. Sorry, I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> well, by the power given to me by Christ Fellowship Church in the state of Florida, I now pronounce you husband and wife. Dylan, you can kiss your bride. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. 